Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the SSF character progression. Uh, today's kind of like uh, day three since I just woke up. And the character has gotten a lot better since the uh, day one of zero to one cold damage. So I ended up solo self on farming a um, Sire of Shards, which wasn't too bad. To get a Sire of Shards, you pretty much go to Lunaris Temple. Make sure that when you're at Lunaris Temple, uh, you want to go to the second floor because that's the only place where it spawns. Um, well, not the only place, but it doesn't spawn on the first floor. And then you pretty much, I was just running from here to the boss and resetting, and that took about two and a half to three hours. Uh, we also got lucky and we found a Jeweler's Touch from our Prophecy uh, that you can find from Navali. For those of you guys who don't know what Jeweler's Touch is, it gives you a guarantee 5 Link 5 socket. So we used our Jeweler's Touch on our Sire of Shards. So currently what we're running with, we have Faster Projectiles, Controlled Destruction, Elemental Focus, Flame Totem, Faster Casting. Now this is not really meant for killing bosses very quickly, but it's pretty okay for, for clear speed now compared to what we had before. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in a quick map. Before I say this though, I literally just killed Kotava on this character and I've run like one or two maps. So this guy is not really set up yet. I haven't done... Um, I haven't even done Merc Lab. I haven't updated my gear yet. Nothing is really too special on my gear except for the Sire of Shards. So I'll just go over that really fast to show you guys. I also found a Warp Timepiece, which is surprisingly pretty good because 11 cast speed and 12% movement speed and dex and intelligence. It's pretty solid. Uh, here's the skill tree that you guys can kind of see. Um, the only thing really to pay attention to with the skill tree is don't pick up staff nodes until you're ready to go crit. Uh, and this is kind of just something I'm testing out because I haven't played a staff build in a very long time. I'm also debating on dropping elemental focus and using immolate and then being able to utilize like uh, this this two point node here, celestial punishment, and also even my merc ascendancy. Part of the reason why I haven't grabbed merc ascendancy is because Nagami's flame advance doesn't do anything for us if we have Ellie focus. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in and start the map slash hideout okay i should have a map device here oh here we go Badoop. all right i also don't know what i'm doing with auras yet right now we're just running anger and it seems to be like okay Now, um, I was actually talking with talking with uh, Tarky Cat, and Tarky Cat informed me of something that I completely forgot about, which is that when we actually get to like elder stuff, I don't remember if it's an elder or a shape piece. I'm pretty sure it's an elder. I can always just look it up. But you can actually get projectile speed on gloves as a global mod, which is very very good because for projectile builds, especially totem builds, they really kind of are starved for projectile speed. I was also thinking that if I still can find a Karui ward, I spent like at least two hours trying to farm a Karui ward, which did not happen. But if I can find a Karui ward, I can probably replace faster projectiles with like increased critical strike chance. Alright, this single target's gonna be kinda bad, just get ready for it, okay? Uh, so to increase my single target, this one might seem silly, but Searing Bond actually would not be too bad. Uh, the only reason why I say that is, again, it would help us make use of the Chieftain Ascendancy node that we're not really making use of right now, which is the Merciless Lab one that I actually don't even have. But also, I have a chest piece open for Lynx, and uh, I haven't thought of anything to put in it yet, so I figured I might as well just get a Searing Bond and put it inside there. Defend the relic. 
You know, there was actually a point in time where I failed this mission as El as uh, Flame Totem. Because when we were doing Flame Totem uh, vol uh, Volley, it did not do enough damage at like level 5 to kill the mobs. Nice. Alright, so that's pretty much how the character's gonna be in maps. Uh, we still have quite a bit of life to pick up. <gasps> An actual gear to replace, like Gold Rim, Mocha's Embrace, um, what else? This doesn't have life, so that's three pieces to replace with life. My boots essentially don't have life on them. Uh, we do have this. This is the best thing I've found. 2 to 22 lightning damage to spells, 25 flat life, flat fire damage to spells while wielding a two-handed weapon, and then increased damage against the missile monsters. This is by far, like, my best find. Um, I also have a two-point jewel here, potential for a three-point jewel up here. Um, I can redo this routing here, so that I can come across this way, and I can grab another 30 decks, and then I have tireless open, and also arsonist as well. But that's pretty much what I've gotten up with right now uh, i'm not too sure what we're gonna do to push the character uh, the main thing right now is obviously starting our atlas progression since we haven't done anything with this and the atlas is going to help us get our character ready for all of the other characters for those people who don't know i really do want to play death's oath in this league as well um, so that's definitely something i want to get started uh, once i'm able to but anyway this is the flame totem character as of right now i'm pretty happy with it um so yeah, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.